All right, here we are one day before the NFL draft. Kim Bocamp, former Dolphin linebacker Tuan Russell with us here. You're on the Aud- This is the Audible powered by our good friends at Ford. You're watching us. You're live on Facebook. Live on Facebook today, Tuan. Live on we got Facebook. a day. We got, we got a little, we got a little, we got a little, a little break. We're live on Facebook. So hopefully you're watching us on Facebook. Also, we're live on Periscope. You can send your questions in. And Tuan, I thought it'd be fun since it's the day before the draft. We've had a lot of questions uh, over the last, you know, month or so on, on, uh, on Periscope scope here who do we think the Dolphins are going to draft who do we think they're going to draft so it's my chance for you guys the listeners to tell us who you think they're going to draft right. send your questions in tell us who you think the Dolphins are going to draft why you think they're going to draft if you want to go that far or just tell tell us who and, and we'll kind of bounce that around a little bit but we'll get a feel for for what the fans are thinking about there in the draft Tom what do you what do you remember about your draft day day before draft your, your draft when was that night night was it 2000 Nin- 2000 what 2013 you were drafted or what? <laughs> no ni- 1997 actually this is my 20th anniversary yeah right? so you know I do got a funny story so you know I didn't know where I was going to be drafted. Everyone projected me kind of third round, the fifth yeah. round. So you know, I the first day I wasn't stressed. The second day, you know, I was you know I was I was paying now attention. Now the first day they did they did fir- they two first, round first they, and second round. Yeah, the they first, did first day, and second round. Then moved Correct. to the third round. Correct. After that, so the, the the second day I'm I'm highly attentive. I'm I'm there yeah. with the family, and the it's the last pick of the third of the um of the third round, and I we get a phone call at the house. You know, there was no cell phones back yeah, then, yeah, so you had yeah, to stay yeah, close to right, the phone. Man. So I, my mom picks up the phone. She says, it's the Detroit Lions. And I call, I pick up the phone. I was like, hey, coach, how you doing? It's like, hey, you know, we're going to take you with the next pick. Do you want to be a Lion? Absolutely, coach. Thank you. I'm excited. We start high-fiving in the house and, and slapping it up, hugging, introducing the, I forget what number it was, yeah. like uh, introducing a linebacker for the Detroit Lions, Matt Russell. <laughs> <laughs> they called the wrong person? They called the wrong person. That's messed up. They they meant to pick you and they picked no. some oh they, they, they were gonna call. they wanted Matt Russell but they called Tuan Russell <laughs> probably some intern called someone yeah. called and they call him and go hey my bad <laughs> no, nobody nothing, called nothing nothing, nothing. nothing. <laughs> and then and I was actually excited because the Dolphins had a, a pick in the fourth round yeah. and, I, and I thought they may take me yeah which they didn't hey, let me tell let me ask you about that you're you're a you're a Miami guy yeah. went to the University of Miami. Uh, went to St. Thomas, yep. so sir, you're a you're a South Florida guy. You grew up in South Florida. What was it like to be able to be picked and to be able to play for the Miami Dolphins in your backyard? I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I mean, I was I was actually picked for the Redskins, yeah. and then you know right. three years later, I had the opportunity to come here. And I remember um, coming here. I met with Coach Westoff, and he was the one that did it for me. Yeah. You know, he took me out to this Marine the Marino's restaurant. I mm-hmm. think off of uh, over there by Hard Rock somewhere. Yeah. And we were sitting there and we're eating pasta. And he says, "Hey, man." I I think you can be a football player for us and I think you can help me win on special teams and I was excited about right. that because it's the first time you know in my career that I was a free agent and then now I'm having guys say they want me right so you know I remember going home you know uh, I was just about to get married I remember talking to my fiance which is my wife now and I said I think I'm going to you know, accept the offer and yeah. it was unbelievable like for me you know to be able to play in front of the people that helped me become who I am yeah. it was awesome I mean the first I had to learn how to say no Yep. I mean, because yeah, I was a yeah, ticket no, request. Yeah. But, I mean, for me, like, I felt even in the community, I was serving the people that allowed me to get here. Yep. I mean, I got to play in front of my high school football coaches, my youth football coaches. Yep. And it was exciting. I mean, I, I loved the idea of just playing at home. And it was a great three years for me. Yeah. You know, it's a, everyone's got a different story about the draft. My draft days, you know, back, it was 1976 was my draft year. And it just so happened that year that the NFL, the NFL Players Association was trying to abolish the draft. You know, because really? if, if if anybody, is, you know, it's kind of for the older audience out there. If you know, you know, back in the day, Kurt Flood did that for Major League Baseball. Kurt Flood's a guy that challenged the uh, challenged the antitrust laws that meant that a team could pick you and you had to stay there. And that's how free agency came about in Major League Baseball because of Kurt Flood making the stand, going out and forcing baseball to re reexamine themselves and in their antitrust and and I guess. What happened was that the that the the government was saying, well, if you don't allow your players free movement, then you're going to lose your antitrust in- exemption. Right. So then the NFL players, the year I was just happened to be the year I was drafted, you know, they said, you know, they they were falling through the same thing. So the draft, much like today, the draft was in was in April, and so you know we're we're there and we're getting ready for April. And then the draft rolls around about three days before the draft. They go, no, we're not going to have the draft. We're, the draft has been postponed. So we, they, we know they're going to have the draft, or we thought they're going to have the draft. 
So they postpone it, and, and then you're just sitting there day to day. Hey, is it going to be today? Is it going to be tomorrow? And then <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, they came in May. I forget what it was, mid-May, and said, okay, the draft's on in like three days or is whatever. Is that the only time it's been in May? Only time it's ever been – it's only ever been changed. So, then, no, so you had to wait just for the draft to begin, and then much like you, you know, there was no TV, there was no right. ESPN, there was no, no way to know where everything was going on. Um, and so you sat there and uh, sat there in your in your apartment waiting for the phone to ring. And like as you, you didn't have cell phones for you. They sure as hell didn't have cell phones for me back in the day. Just so you know, I was two. Huh? In 1976, you were two. Yes. Well, I'm, I'll tell you another. I'll tell you another story. I'll tell you a funny story. So I, I come to the Dolphins, and when I get to the Dolphins in 1976, um, still, you know, you still had a good majority of the 17 and 0 guys were right. still on this football You're 10 team. Years away. You know, and Nick Bonacani was there, Bob Greasy was there, uh, Larry Little, Bob Kuchenberg, Jim Langer, uh, Bill Stanfill, Manny for all, all the bunch of those guys, Dick Anderson, Jake Scott. So I, I walked into that locker room w- w- with those guys, you know, and, and, and so they're wondering to me, what, you know, what the hell, what the hell is this guy doing in here? You know, so it was, it was an odd thing. Coming into a locker room where I had just watched these guys play o- o- only a few years ago, and back then rookies didn't make the team very often, right? It wasn't well, a very well, veteran. Well, well, there were seventeen rounds in the draft, you know, so you had seventeen rounds. So anyway, so I come in and and we're down at St. Thomas. You mm-hmm. you were at St. Thomas? No, you were always I heard up here. about it. Yeah. I was okay, there. so you know it was a, it was an old it was Spartan it was an old you know place, but the, the whole league was was kind of like that and, and but and we had two wall unit air conditioners that's all we had in the, the in, that's unit. all we had <laughs> <laughs> when's the last time you saw a wall unit you go down the hood you see some wall units but you don't see my, wall I units too much anymore grandma house. yeah yeah that's right with the loo they had the, do you still have those like those the little glass right right thing? <laughs> well i forget what you call those things but jealousy windows right yeah <laughs> so so there was two well, there was two air conditioning units and and one of them was right over earl morrill's locker so Earl, who was the oldest player in the football team, may have been the oldest player in the league, league at that time, uh, I would sit by Earl, right? Because just because, you know, there was a trunk there I could sit on after after two a days, and I could sit there and catch the uh, get the air conditioner blowing on me. So I'd talk to Earl. So I'm talking to Earl one day, and I said, and I knew he'd been around the league a lot. He played for the Giants, the 49ers, Detroit, a bunch of places. And, and I and and I said, Earl, I said, you know, geez, what? When was your rookie year in the league anyway? Anyway, he says 1956. I was two years old. I played with him for two years. I played with Earl Morrill for two years, and I was two years old the day he was born. I mean, the day he was drafted. Is that amazing? That's amazing. And, That's crazy. And, and, and then to wrap up his career, he's also the only guy I ever know. He, he he knew it was time to retire when he pulled a hamstring in a walkthrough practice. He figured, hey, that's it. I'm done. I'm out of here. But uh, yeah, it was great. But uh, my my funny Earl Morrill story is when I first got here for the Dolphins, uh, we had a when we just we first built the bubble and we yeah. had this uh, they had this big thing where we were honoring Earl and Nat was supposed to introduce him. So right. at the last minute, Nat had to go on a trip. He said, "Hey, Twan, can you do this for me?" And I'm introducing all the players and. And I guess someone wrote something wrong yeah. on the paper about Earl. So I announced he comes out. He was very cordial, great. Yeah, yeah. And then as soon as I finished, I walked down. His wife oh, got no, in my no, chest. No, no. She got in my Jane. chest. And she said, you forgot this and you forgot that. And I was like, ma'am, I just, I just, I put it on the net. I said, yeah. I just ran with Nat Gaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, Joe, no, no. You don't get it wrong with Jane's around. No, 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 Jane. I still hear from Jane all the time. No, she was no, a no. sweetheart, but she let me. Hard, no. But my, she was she was she was Earl's biggest look. She was Earl's biggest fan. She was Earl's biggest proponent. Mm. She was his biggest defender. She she was. Uh, I mean, she that was a good and a, and, a, and a wonderful family. The entire family, right. really a great family. She said, so, "Baby, I know you don't know, but you miss some stuff." Yeah, yeah. No, well, you know, he was like I think it was a two time league MVP. He, he was unbelievable. The things that he Phenomenal. accomplished. I mean, Phenomenal. and an unbelievable man. Yes. Like that's that's the part that I got. I didn't get to see him yeah. as much as a football player. I did get to know him as a man yeah. and a gentle servant. I mean, that's he was you unbelievable. Know, Earl Earl to this day may be the nicest man I've ever met in 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 sports. Okay. I mean, always willing to do something and you know, I remember when I first came in the league, you know, I mean, Jane Jane introduced herself to me, and she said, "Hey, you get an apartment. You need some help with furniture. Oh, wow. You know, it, it just so happened the furniture she was interested in, in me buying was her <laughs> furniture. Her furniture. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, you know what? <laughs> uh, then she tried to sell me her house. 
<laughs> Did you buy and it? she tried to sell me a car. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're a rookie. You don't know any better. <laughs> oh, God. That's Jesus. awesome. <laughs> She tried to sell you furniture. She did, yeah. The house she, and, and the, house, the car. And the car. All three. Did they have all a daughter? Didn't you try not to all, Not all at the same time. <laughs> and, and now, if you remember, now Earl, I don't know, you know, Earl, anybody from down South Florida who was back then, knew back then, now, you know, now Earl built one of those round houses that looked like a spaceship. So Is that the one that's in Plantation? That's the one. That's <laughs> the one in Plantation Acres. <laughs> no, no, there's one in Plantation. His, his was in Davie, okay, okay. but the same thing. Okay. It's the same house. It looks like a spaceship. It, it looks, it, absolutely. It, it, all the furniture has to be custom because the whole house is, <laughs> it, looks like a, it looks like a satellite, like a spaceship. So yeah, that was it. But uh, yeah, well, enough People for a like, more. what are we talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. Kind of went off on a, went off on a tangent here. But uh, anyway, uh, it, it is the day before the draft. And, and, and I asked you about your draft day experience. Um, and, and I tell you, there, there, there are so what? There's thirty, there's thirty-two teams. Uh, there's seven rounds. So what? What's that come out to? 200, 300 guys get drafted. Two yeah, eighty, little, little under, little under three hundred. Little under three hundred, yeah. right there. So you got, you know, you got, you got almost three hundred guys right now. Uh, well, you probably got four hundred guys right now that are on pins and needles, waiting to see what's going to happen over the next three days. And some of those guys aren't going to be happy once the weekend's over and they'll sign as, as free agents. But for everybody else, it's like, Hey, you know what, w- where am I going to live? Right. Where am I going to be moving to? Where am I going to continue my profession? What's my say? And so it's, it's as, as exciting of a time I think as it is for players right now before the draft, there's always that, there's also that unknown of where I'm going and there's the excitement of, Hey, where I might end up, right. you know? I mean, I was so green. Like, honestly, I didn't know if I was going to get drafted at all. Yeah. I mean, my senior year, I mean, honestly, my, my junior year, I and mean, I was a starter from my probably half of my yep. sophomore year, regular sophomore year, junior year. And I remember going into my senior year, I'm, I'm going in to watch film, and this guy was in there from the Raiders. And I walk in, and I said, oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. He said, what's your name? Yeah. I was like, Tuan Russell. Oh, yeah, I was just watching you. You're going to yeah. play in the NFL a yeah. long time. That was the first time yeah, I ever yeah, thought about playing yeah. the National Football yeah. League yeah. until he said that. And I was yeah. like, okay. And that year, I, you know, I, find, I, I wanted to play weak side linebacker. It was always either a Sam linebacker yeah. or something like that. So I got to play week. I, I had great a great year, and I got drafted. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was fun. But um, a lot of these guys are walking into the situation. They have no clue. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have some guys get surprised that they're going to get drafted a lot higher than they expected. Yeah. And the hard part is those guys that go up to the, the draft yeah, and then, and, and then start slipping and yeah. start falling. And that's the hardest thing to I, watch. I was, I was up there covering the draft for uh, CBS 4 down here in Miami when Jake Long got drafted. Jake was the mm-hmm. f- first pick in the draft. I think that was Jake's year. Yeah, well, he was first pick for yes, us, yeah. first pick in the in the draft. I think that year. I know he just re- yeah, Jake Long. He just retired after nine years and injuries and stuff. But but it was it was the it was the year that Alex Smith was there and Aaron Rodgers was there. We were there. It may have been when Ronnie Brown was picked. That may have been the Ronnie Brown draft because he was the second pick. So so he had Aaron Rodgers and and um, and. Um, Quarterback for Kansas City. I just gave you his name. Alex Smith. Yeah, Alex, Alex Smith. Smith. So they were going to be – either one of those guys was going to be the first pick in the draft. And and then you look after that, and there was, eh, don't need a quarterback, don't need a quarterback, maybe a quarterback, don't need a quarterback, don't need a quarterback. So the so so the 49ers took, um, took Alex Smith, and then I sat there and watched Aaron Rodgers just go – just – Pick after pick after pick after pick. He went down to 26, I believe, 25 or 26, somewhere. And I remember looking over. They had a family section at Radio City Music Hall where they had to draft. They had a family section up in the bleachers there. None of them were left. The only people were left that were Aaron Rodgers' family. Wow. All the other ones, the kid, their, their son had been picked. Pick, family. Yeah. So they, they were off kind of moving on to the mm-hmm. next thing. And and you could see, I'd look up there, his mom, his dad, and every pick you'd see him, they'd kind of, uh, oh. You know, it, it was it was almost heartbreaking watching it. So yeah, I mean, it's a you know, there, there's the, the range of emotions on, on draft day is well, pretty pretty intense. Teams pay. Certainly made a pay, yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. So Dolphins have Dolphins have seven picks going in. We're going to be live here on the Audible uh, 
for that pick for the Miami Dolphins. We're going to be on beginning at 8 o'clock. You can watch us on Dolphins.com. You can watch us on the Dolphins app. Then when the Dolphins get ready to pick or soon thereafter, we'll be live on Facebook and we'll be live on Periscope with that pick or, you know, going over the pick, giving your thoughts about that selection and everything. So you can catch us right at draft time or you can catch us at Dolphins.com and the Dolphins uh, Dolphins app throughout the uh throughout the course of the evening uh, for, for the draft. Uh, Tuan, any, any thoughts on what you'd like to see? I'm not looking for names, no, but, no, but I, you know, I, I've kind of been going through this whole thing because everyone's throwing names. And I'm more of just, hey, look, these are the positions of need. This is where I think the priority is, and, and, then, and then we'll see what happens there. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell. I mean, you know, some people say guard. Some people say linebacker. Some people say in safety. It's, it's, I mean – we're in a good position, but we're also in a position where we need to add some help. Yes. I mean, we're. I mean, when you look at our core group, we're fine. I mean, we just signed Timmons, and and I mean, and he's probably going to be the middle linebacker yeah. for that for that defense. You got Cole Meese, probably going to be a strong side linebacker. Obviously, you got Kiko, um, and I think Kiko is going to be even better because yes, he's going to be I, 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 if he plays that weak side linebacker. I think this. I think he's going to be so much better. He's yeah. probably going to lead the the team, if not the division. And tackles, and I think they need to bring in one more guy, one more linebacker, yep. a guy to sure up that because injuries do happen. Yep. Uh, and, and my guess is that they're going to be targeting a, a guy that plays Sam, that can play that Sam linebacker and that weak side linebacker that can play a couple different positions. Yep. If we went in, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad about that either. Yep. I mean, because you you need some help. Like the way they rotated those ends last year, yep. you can bring a young guy in and get him some reps, and he could be a significant contributor in setting him up. Because at some point, Wake is going to have to retire. He yep. is he is breaking every law in football and <laughs> age rule it's, there it's is. Everything else you want to talk about. At some point, at some point. It's going to catch up to him. I don't know if that's in a couple of years from now, but you know, I wouldn't. I think if they brought it in, and that that would be a smart move yeah. too. And then even if they said they wanted to go guard, you know, I'm yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know if we need to find a guard in the first round unless he is the guy. Yeah. But or if they if they if they found a guy that could play guard and tackle that can play a couple different right. positions at a high level, yeah, that makes sense to me. But I think those are the three positions for me that when they're going into that first round that they're going to be targeting yeah. now. And who knows? I mean, you know, a lot of people say, hey, if they're going to take the tight end from the University of Miami. Yeah. I think that would be a mistake. Like, tight end for me is not a necessity. Well, you, know, you know, tight end to me was on the table before you went out and you got, you got Julius, Julius Thomas yeah. and before you went out and got Anthony Fasano. And, and now you draft, a, you know, you draft a tight end in the first round, although you look at Njoku and you look at the kid, uh, uh, the kid from uh, uh, Alabama, and they're both they're, – those guys could be – they could be world beater tight ends. They're that, they've got that kind of talent, but – but but you want to stack that many people yeah. at that, that one position? Doesn't put us over the hump. Doesn't though. no. It doesn't put us over the. But I'm with you. I think to the, to me, I say defense, defense, defense. With the one caveat being, if they're that guard that jumps out, that's he, he's just that much higher on your on your chart than any of the defensive players. Then they're going to do that. But uh, other than that, you know, I I'd be just as happy with a linebacker. But I'd be most happy with a linebacker. Be fine with a defensive end. Be be happy with a cornerback or a safety. Any of those positions on the defensive side of the football would make me feel better. It's amazing how time solves some issues. When you look at quarterback, I mean, we all feel comfortable at quarterback. When you look at wide receivers, we have three wide receivers that we think we, that, that can play the game. Um, you know, tight end, we're solid at tight end. Yep. I mean, overnight, we became solid at tight end. Offensive line, I think we are probably 80, I mean, 75% there. I mean, like, we have our, – our offensive line is pretty strong right yep. now, I think, by adding one more piece. But you're right, on defense, like – you know, our secondary is okay. I think we're going to have a battle at, you know, the, the opposite of Rashad yeah. at safety. But linebacker, defensive end, that position, if they brought a defensive end that could play tackle yeah, to a well, guy. Defense, go, you know, the tackle it, position also is, yeah, is a is – I mean, a, you know, because, I mean, we're going to expect a lot out of Phillips this year. Well, look, the, the other thing, you, you look at what's – you know, you, you got Marshawn Lynch now with a, and is going, we're going to face Marshawn Lynch. I, we're going to face – we're going to face Adrian Peterson. Right. And we're going to face, you know, uh, Mike Gillisley, in the former Florida Gator. He's at New England now, and you know, New England is going to find a way to 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 make him a better player. They do it with everybody that comes in there, and, and the other running backs. So, I mean, defense. You better shore up your run defense because you got some beasts coming at you uh, during this seven, regular season. Our front seven have to be beasts. Yes, I mean, the, with the with the teams that we're playing this year. Our defensive line, our linebackers, we're going to go as they go. Yeah. So, I mean, in, it, there's a saying, we go, you go. So, yeah. as they go, we're going to yeah. go. And 
Let's go into some questions here. All right. Periscope, uh, fantastic feller. Hey, Bo, do you see any truth to us possibly trading, us possibly trading Devontae Parker? I don't see it happening. Absolutely. I, I don't see it happening. I think Not, they're expecting him big things out of him. I think they're expecting big, big things from him. Facebook, uh, Jason Stavros, any chance we get an Njoku from the U? Well, we just talked about yeah. Njoku. You know, I, first of all, I don't think he's going to get to 22. Um, Unless he falls out of the first. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, if he falls out of the – but, you know, but look, I think we're – we're in the second round. We're the 54 pick in the second round. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, that's a lot of picks. That's a lot to, of yeah. picks. He, he ain't gonna fall to, to 54 to the you know to the 54th pick overall uh, in the in the second round there. But can you imagine him and Julius oh. in the, at oh, the same time? <laughs> well, look. And the other thing about this football team is you you look last year. They played a lot of two tight and they played a lot of three tight. They like multiple tight end formations. It he, gives them flexibility. He likes that gives them play. running opportunity. It gives them opportunity to split them out, move the ball down the field. He likes multiple tight ends. So look, if that happened, if you happened to fall in your lap and you just couldn't say no, uh, then you know, then then you know, go ahead and and do it. You know, whether, whether it's him or OJ Howard. You know, my personal opinion, I think Gase likes to have tight ends. And put them mis- mismatches on those linebackers. Yes. They have athletic yep. tight ends and say, make your linebacker play yep. me. Or you bring an extra safety, then I'm going to run the yeah. ball at you. So it's, it's definitely a mismatch. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, another Facebook, Jimmy uh, Ordor. Solidify the offensive line, solidify the O line for the train to run. I, I don't have a problem with that. As I said, if, if, if it's a guard there and the kid Forrest Lamp is a name that's you know most talked about with the Dolphins, and, uh, and I've seen him. Picked higher in mock drafts. I've seen him in the second round in a couple places. Uh, but I think he's going to be right around there on 22. And if you have him that much higher, look, I, the thing about the offense, the thing that's tough about the offense is it's almost perfect right now. You got three nice running backs that do different things. You got four receivers there that, that really do a good job for you. You know, you got you got tight ends that are that are, you know, can make plays for you. And you got three of five offense alignment that you feel really good about. But it's those two guards that you kind of scratch your head. Although I'm, I'm look, I'm a pro Bushrod guy, and, and you go out and you get the other kid. Who the what's the kid they got from uh, Ted Larson from yeah, Chicago? Larson. I don't. I feel better about those two guys than the two guys we had going into the preseason last year. Well, let, let me. I'm gonna ask a question, and make a point too. So if, when you look at, I'm a pouncy guy. Like the yep. whole the whole idea of pouncy, the yep. way he the way he looks, the way he plays, yeah, the way I'm he acts. You. Like that's the kind of player. If I could, if I could you be can reborn, find ten of those guys and put them on your right. team. Now he's had some injuries yep. here in the past. You know, do we feel comfortable with Steen if if that happens again? Do you bring in a guy that can play center and guard? Yeah. If that guy is sitting there and you got a center guard guy that can play at a high level, do you pull the trigger? I, I would I would do that, but I would do it in the second or third round. Okay. I would look for that guy in the okay. second or third round, because now you're now you're now you're looking for a backup, mm-hmm. you know, in your in your first pick, and I I just don't I, I don't know I don't know that I would I would go in that direction. Uh, Periscope uh, at Banja style at Banja Bajan style. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Let's get the Ginn family again. <laughs> Are we ever going to hear the end of that? Hey, and, oh, know, oh, by the way, oh by years. the way, Teddy Ginn is still playing. Still making plays, still productive. All the crap that he got from down here in Miami, and that son of a bitch is still playing at a high level. He reinvented himself in he San did, Francisco, yeah. reinvented himself in, in, Carolina. in Carolina. I yep. mean, hey, he wasn't a good fit for us, but no. the guy's made a career. And, and look, great kid, man, great oh, kid. I, every time guy. I see him, he comes over. Comes from a great he family. Comes from a great family. <laughs> <laughs> I hope his family. I don't know how his family's doing. I know Teddy's doing. Teddy's just packing money in his pocket. Hey, he That's what he's walk, doing. You got so much money. <laughs> you're darn right. Uh, Facebook. Uh, hey, Sue Shira, but Foster might drop because of issues. Well, there's no question. I mean, uh, the kid Foster, the uh, Ruben Foster, the yeah. linebacker from ten or uh, from Alabama, got thrown out of the combine. Has a dilu- got a diluted uh, uh, sample, and so he he's the he and. Um, and Jabril Peppers, who also has a diluted sample, those are kind of the Laramie Tunzels of this year. Right. No one knows where they're going to end. Who's going to jump up? And then there's a kid from Ohio State, the cornerback, that just got in a, a, a domestic violence or, a, or an abuse situation. And who, know, who knows what's going to happen? The Lael Collins thing cost him being drafted throughout the entire draft, and he turned out to be okay. So there, you know, you, you got three guys in there that. It's going to be very interesting to see where they land. Four years ago, I would say we would never take a guy like that because I don't think we had a strong enough locker room. Now we have a solid leadership, strong locker room, strong uh, 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 senior leadership in our organization. If we did take a chance, 
yeah. on a guy like that. We got enough guys that can say, hey, yeah. man, you need, we need you to win. Yes. You got to step up, and, and you got to stay away from that stuff. Much like Tyron Matthew uh, exactly. a few years back. Exactly. He goes to the right place because Patrick Peterson is there to wrap his arms around him and say, look, I'm going to show you how we do this. And, and he's become a, a, a Pro Bowl player for you. And that's and, exactly what you guys yeah. did. I mean, I hear the stories of when, when guys were drafted, you, would, you guys would take those rookies yeah. and you would get them and get them going the right direction. You would teach them on the field, yeah. teach them off the field, yeah. and keep them going the right well, direction. Well, because, you know, I mean, you know, Tuan, I mean, and, and look, whoever, whoever the Dolphins draft tomorrow evening is expected to help this team win games. And if that now. guy's and that guy if that guy's expected to help you win games now, the veterans better wrap their arms around him and make him one of their own. And we got a good veteran crew. No, absolutely, really I, I'm with you on that. Periscope, Courtney, New Jersey, eleven. Hey, Bo, what do you think the mindset of the Dolphins draft room might be? Well, I think they want to get a lot of players, uh, and I think I, I think every time I think it's very simple when their when their number is called, they want to take the best player on the board at that time and run with it. And I think, and, and that's really it's a, it's it's simplifying it, but I think that's their that's their mindset. When I when I look at what type of defense and offense we're running, I think they're going to pick guys to create competition yep. at every single position. You might say, well, why are they bringing in this guy? We already have someone that's a starter, is strong there. I think they're going to create competition in every position because con- uh, because competition only makes your team better. It forces your veterans to work hard. It yep. forces the young guys to catch up. And and I love competition. I think they're going to challenge. Yep. They're guys with all these picks. Well, you, you look. You've been around this team for a long time. You've seen them on the practice field. I, I don't think they've had better. I don't. I don't think they've had a more competitive year on the practice field than they had last year. Oh yeah, and that, that comes from the, the it comes, head coach. Comes from the head man. <laughs> uh, Periscope Flynnburn one. Reddick stock is at a premium right now. You're talking about the kid uh, from uh, Temple, Hassan Riddick, kind of oh, outside linebacker, defensive end, kind of a swing guy, uh, especially with Foster's issues. Uh, it's just, like I said, that kind of goes back to let's see where these guys end up and where they fall. I don't know if he's a 4-3 guy, though. I don't know if he's a 4-3 you know, linebacker. He's more of a 3-4 linebacker to me. I don't know yeah, if he— Yeah, but you know what, Tawana? I'm kind, of the, I'm kind of the thought anymore. If you're a 4-3 team, you put a, you put a guy that's a stand-up linebacker that can rush out there and let him stand up and rush. It, it, doesn't it, mean you have to put his hand in the dirt, but he, but he would be a third down guy for you. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think for us, we need a guy that can, that's going to thrive on, on both, you know, standing yeah. up. I, I mean, because we don't run an under front where we're going to walk a Sam yeah. linebacker on the line of scrimmage. I yeah. think we, we pretty much predominantly run over front. Yeah. So our guys are off the ball and they have to be able to cover yeah. because we put stress on our linebackers. I mean, we go after people and yeah. you have one on one matchups yeah. with our linebackers. So I, I don't know. I mean, I like him. He's a good football player. I mean, if he does come, he would play Sam linebacker, yep. but I don't know if that's the best fit. For I'm us. with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm a little lukewarm on that. Um, Facebook, uh, Christopher Vega. Hey, guys, what do you think of Zach Cunningham? I like Zach Cunningham. Yeah, I think he's a technically sound guy. Uh, I think he makes plays. I think he's a side, he's an effort guy, all those things that you talk about. Uh, and he's a guy that, that, that probably – is 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 a very good locker room type of a guy coming from Vanderbilt and just seeing the character uh, that this guy has shown. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know much about I don't know much about him, but I think you know the the character piece is important for our team. You know, when I when I look at what type of guys they're going to bring in, I know seventy five percent of the guys on this team are going to do it the right way, yeah. and they may take a chance with five percent of the team, but it's not going to be you know a high level. Yeah. So character guys are important to the. Yeah, dogs. but I'm with you. Guys that have a little character issues. I think this team can absorb them and and, and help them get better. Uh, but you want to, you obviously want to say Periscope, uh, Nathaniel, Nathan Annual, Nathaniel. <laughs> hey, Twan, happy birthday! It's your birthday, Twan. Yesterday. Yesterday was your birthday. Yeah, I'm a strong 43. All right, strong. Now you're you're on to you're you're past it now. You're you're closer <laughs> to 44 than you were to 43 right now. <laughs> Facebook, uh, Tiffany Williams. Why not trade out of the first round to pick uh, to pick? Why not trade out of the first round and send the pick to Seattle for Richard Sherman? Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. I wouldn't give up a first round pick for Richard Sherman right now. Not, not, not where this football team's at right now. I think they've got, they've got too many more areas of need on this football team. And you bring in a guy that – now here's a guy, if he's a disruptive guy – you don't have anybody in that locker room that's gonna. That's he, gonna he's, alpha, he's alpha male. He, he, yes. he walks in an alpha he, male, and exactly. I, I, I can only think of maybe he, one other guy. He's like Joey Porter walking into the locker room. Absolutely. Joey Porter's gonna do his things his way. But you what, like it or not, he's gonna do things his way. And what was scared me about Sherman is that, you know, he, I mean, he's at a place in his career where he's he's a little bit older. Yeah, yeah. And usually teams start jumping shit because they they know things about him that we won't ever well, know. And, and, and the hint is 
Seattle's willing to give him up. Right. What does that well, tell why? you? If he's Yo, that great. What does that tell you? The guys play at a high level. They Two know something. Two years ago, you think they'd have given him up? Heck no. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, that's that, that's always the thing. You know, everyone looks at free agents. They look at trades. And sometimes they never look at, well, well if this guy's available, there must be something wrong with him if that team doesn't want him. And, even if it's and just, all he's done is made plays for him when he was there. And even if it's just him being disruptive in the locker room. Yeah. Like, people don't understand. If you got a bad apple in that yeah. locker room, it can destroy your team. Yep, yeah, no doubt. Uh, Periscope, uh, Ramirez, at, at Ramirez the Gnome. What dream player the Dolphins could draft? Oh. Y- you know the kid that, I tell you, the kid that just is, man. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm counting, I'm hoping upon hope that New England doesn't draft this kid. But because if they do, he is going to kill everybody. <laughs> I'm talking about the kid from Stanford, Christian McCaffrey, the running back. That is a do-everything kid right there. He's a kick returner. He's a running back. You can you can put him you can flex him out wide you can do so many things with that kid, and you put him on New England's roster that's going to spell trouble. I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and, and I know people don't want to talk about it. If that kid was a, a, a little bit shaded, a little bit darker, yeah, that kid is the the most talked about kid, and it's yeah. almost reverse racism. Yeah. I mean, he is probably one of the most dominating. Yeah. College athletes that I've seen in a long time. And, and look at his lineage. His father played in the NFL. His grandfather was a gold medal winner. You know, I mean, this this kid comes from not only a, not only from an athletic standpoint, but his family comes from a very very high uh, educational level, right. very disciplined, very you know. That's just it's just what he is. That kid's gonna be a football. Player. Oh, I, all, yeah. That kid is gonna be a football player. I yeah. mean, at the highest level, yeah. he's gonna be a poster child at yeah. some point for the National Football yeah. League. Because he can play football. I mean, he has the mindset and yeah. he has the physical attributes, and he's a physical runner. Let me like tell when you, you what, see him running, Dolphins draft him up in, at twenty-two. I know it's one of the last things we need as a running back. I'm doing cartwheels. <laughs> well, I mean, at twenty for us, I mean, it'll be it'll be great because you know you're getting a good football yeah. player. But I mean, it depends on who's that. on the board. I understand it, but you no, I I understand that. I'm just saying if that happens to be the guy they pick. I just think a guy can do so many he's different a things, he man. Is a football, does, he's yeah. a game-changing football yeah. player. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's my dream guy in the draft, and right. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Reuben Foster it. roll I down. I wouldn't there. hate it. No, no. Uh, okay, one more, last one here. Uh, Eddie Osborne. We need to go after the best available. Well, there you go. That's what uh, when uh, Chris Greer and Mike Tannenbaum had their meeting, their uh, press conference a couple weeks ago, and. Everybody says that. Go after the best available. Go after the best available. I I, I tend to be that guy where my eye kind of drifts over. The, and we need that defensive end right there. And he's a step. He's only two steps down from this guy, you know. But I, they're, they're best, more disciplined than me. I am a best available guy when, in the first round. Yeah. In the first round, I I truly believe I'm general manager. Um, I'm saying I'm taking the, the most dominating player in the draft, yeah. the no-miss guy, even if I'm strong in that position, because you know what? I want to be stronger, yeah. and then I want to create competition, and then I know I can – you have to win on your yeah. first-round picks. You have yeah. to win. Yeah. And if you have too many guys in one one um, position, well, now you have trade bait. Yeah. Now you can trade a guy. So, I mean, pick the most available – the best available guy, unless the guy – you know, if you got a guy that's one – like yeah. if you say he's two, two rounds down, I'll take him two rounds down. Yeah. But other than that, I'll take the most available yeah. guy, disregard position. I'm with you. Duan, what you got going tomorrow night? Uh, man, I'm going to hang out at the draft a little bit. Yep. Um, I'm going to try to get home and hang out with the kids. You watch the draft for the rest of the weekend or no? Uh, well, I have, my, I have my big golf tournament okay, this weekend. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't mind me plugging it. You know, no, if you guys want to check us out, um, we'll be at Dave & Buster's Friday night starting at 6.30. And then on Saturday, we um, have our golf tournament. We have the draft on all weekend. So, come check us out. You just, you just, Leon just, he just shook the ball. You since you, if you plug something, you got to drop some money in for the cheap skates back there. <laughs> uh, well, when like I get they it. don't make enough money. Those guys are making more freaking money than, than God knows who. You know. I got some lint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Tuan, that's gonna do it, man. That's awesome, man. All right, let me remind you guys. Tomorrow night, the NFL draft for the Miami Dolphins starts at eight o'clock. You can watch us on Dolphins.com here in the Audible, uh, powered by Ford. You can watch us on uh, the Dolphins app. And then just prior to or right after the draft, you'll be we'll be live on Periscope. We'll be live on Facebook. You can catch uh, our thoughts on who we draft in the first round for that uh, at that point. So we'll go ahead and keep you updated. We've got a lot of stuff going on at the stadium. If you don't want to watch us on the air and you live close, come on down to the stadium. Big party and have all kinds of stuff going on. Get to hang out in the field, do all kinds of things. So it'll be a it's going to be I, one thing about this Dolphin football team, Twan. They always put on a show for these hey, kind of events. I, I, I just saw the setup. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. They get a big old stage. 
It's going to be fun. I mean, yeah. it's going to be lots of fun. So come check us out. Come on out. You can see Leon. <laughs> you can finally see Leon. Leon Leon's huh? going to have a tutu on. Neon Leon. Find Neon Leon big out there. Huh? All the change I'm big pockets for all the change. Big cash. Big Big pennies, Leon. Big pennies. Got plenty of pennies. He don't, he's doing he's doing one finger. He, one pen, finger. he flexes the pennies out there. Ding, 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 ding. That's going to do it for the Audible Presenter. Powered by Ford. We'll catch you. We'll see you tomorrow night. Catch up with us on the draft, and we'll let you know exactly what's going on. We'll see you then. Ching, 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 ching. <laughs>